All right, I think that transition worked. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the most scuffed production. If you thought that Ninja had it bad, oh, just you wait. Uh, K-Bot, tell the good people, why are you casting in the dark today? So, apparently, my power has gone out. Um, but my Wi-Fi router works just fine. So, this has given me flashbacks to the talk speed up episode where I did it outside because my Wi-Fi router was down. Now you get K-Bot in the dark. Um, I, if I had more time, I'd, I'd have done, like, some spooky, uh, Ghost of Castle Past, like, skit on Twitter. Uh, so you can just imagine what that might have looked like. The other good news about me being dark is that you can't see how red my face is gonna get over the course of this. So, that'll be good as well. Um, yeah. How you doing, everybody? I'm still here. I'm just in the dark. Yeah, he, he is filling time right now because... I, so I want you to know, as a man of the people here, I asked K-Bot to put a flashlight below his face so that it was like campfire spooky horror stories as he commentated this. Uh, clearly, he has not gone with that. Um, he did not want to have a good time and make you all laugh, so just keep that in mind in the future. But welcome. Hey, no, no, no. Now, I was planning on doing it as a skit, mm. all right, and then uh, the whole skit thing, I ran out of time to do that. So. Sure. It, uh, it's true, everybody. This this whole operation came together in the span of about 15 minutes, so give us a little credit yep. here. Um, and now you get to watch me update the maps live because I forgot to update the neutral picks, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So as k does that, I'll take the opportunity to welcome everybody in. This is Tassel Week 4, and this is probably the matchup that I think everyone is looking forward to seeing now. We have Rift versus Freeze, and anyone who watched Tassel knows exactly how hot Rift is right now, coming off a big, crazy, and one of the better sets I've ever seen, victory over top-seeded Radiance. But now they get to go up against Freeze, and K-Bot, Twitter was pretty split on this one. I believe it was 5-4, right? You didn't really have a, a consensus yeah. pick from the audience. Well, the consensus, I think, was something like 57% in favor of Freeze. Uh, but the way the uh, the way the scoring works for Twitter is basically it's in increments of 10, right? Uh, and the number of games that the losing team wins is the tens place of the percentage. So in that case, because it was 43%, uh, it, Twitter gives 5-4 to Rift. But yeah, I mean, very split on the whole. Uh, it's, it's difficult to judge Freeze. I think it's the most difficult thing, right? Because we know what Rift is going to do. We know what they're to expect from them. But we really don't have a very firm grasp of Freeze's skill level approximately right now. Sure, they 5 0 usual guys, and they did that in rather convincing fashion. But in terms of the top three in this league, in the European division, it's hard to really put them on that measuring scale right now. Yeah, because I, I think we don't really have a good reference for the scale. It's, I, you know, I don't think that, well, I know none of us did on the caster's desk picked, or picked Rift to beat Radiant, so... Uh, I, I think this is going to answer a lot of questions here, and on the NA side, I know that uh, the top two teams have kind of pulled away. There's only three teams left, and the top two of them have pulled away. Um, but uh, this is really going to be the determining factor for the playoffs on the EU side, and it should be a great set. I'm really excited. Some people have already commented on the map list itself. Yeah, I hope you all enjoy tower control, because I sure as heck don't, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to put on my best okay. face to cast it for you guys. You know, nine, okay. I don't think tower control is bad um, and from a spectator's point of view. Like, from a spectator's point of view, it can get very close and very tense. I mean, of course, I'm thinking sure. game nine, Rift versus Radiance. Um, when it was like, okay, who's going to stay on the tower for long enough? <laughs> you know, uh, the, the clutch double kill at the end to pick that up, up for Rift and the set up for Rift. Um, so, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see exactly what comes out of this. I mean, as you mentioned, every single map that was picked by Rift is a tower control map. Uh, so you must feel extremely strong on this mode coming into it. Um, all it's worth noting, we're seeing tower control Mint Maria again as one of the neutral picks that we are definitely going to get. Um, so yeah, that we'll, we'll have to see exactly what comes to this. As a reminder, everyone, for those of you just filtering in, yes, hello, I'm reading chat. Yes, it's dark mode, my power is out, <laughs> but my Wi-Fi is on. So I, I don't know what the deal with that is. Yeah, his, his Wi-Fi is hanging on by a thread here as his power is out, which is actually pretty remarkable. Uh, yeah, the power the power is out here, even though power is in the chat. Power is not at K-Bot's house, so... There, I got my one I got my one power joke out of the way here. Haha, <laughs> we get that there, but... Uh, Rainmaker Humpback Pump Trap is going to be our first map. We're just waiting for the last couple of players to trickle in here. And actually, I think I'll go ahead and try to fund my mouse here, and actually pull it over here. 
because it's just going to be a matter of Mika getting started and then we'll be in. We are off here on game one, Kbot. Game one, Rainmaker help out and pump track once again. One of those maps that always comes down to who can get past the choke point and who can sprint the furthest down to the opposing side spawn. It'll be interesting to see exactly what strategy we come out of here, although we probably have very uh, confirmed double ink jets coming out of Rift, although I say that and it looks like that might not exactly be the case here. No, not exactly at all here. It's actually kind of interesting to see the way that these teams have opted to gear themselves up. They both have kept an end zap here for a little safer, but I think that Urza is going to have a really, really fun time piloting that K-Pro against what Freeze is going to be bringing out. And actually, he goes down already, so you know what? I am totally wrong. <laughs> Off the bat, bat in a thousand, let's go! That is called Caster's first and that gets but with a two-down situation on Rip's side. It's going to allow Freeze to pick up this Rainmaker here. Crap, we get a little bit of early points on the board now. Okay, so there it is. Goes down. There is going to get the side, of course. Have to expect it here. And one of the things that we didn't get to just talk about in the beginning is what this backline battle Woo! is going to look like. Zeraz is hitting all of the shots right now and definitely stepping up in, in a matchup you would probably favor Alexei. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows exactly what Alexei has been able to do over the course of a very long and storied Splatoon career, but the thing about Splatter Shot, or, or Splatter Scope, rather, is that just one shot, man. Just one shot, and it completely changes it around here. As you see the Stingray battles as well, but I'm glad that you brought that up, because this is not an easy map or an easy mode to play that weapon on, so it's very, very important that they get a little bit of protection. And you see here, look at this. They're letting the snipers and specials try to get rid of Zerus. They're like, let's keep him cool before he starts destroying us. And that's probably the uh, mentality that you're going to want to have here. So Erosa tries to step forward, but again, with the pressure coming in from Zeras and the support of the rest of the team, not just going to pick up the Rainmaker to reset it. And now it's just moving on forward here, applying pressure on the plat with the busy bombs. This thing right comes back there, the direction try to lock things down is going to find one. Not just pops this splash down, just to continue creating havoc here for Freeze. And actually, look at how much of this elbow is in purple right now. Very well contested right now by Freeze as they continue stepping forward. It looks like it is going to go down thanks to Alexei. And again, backline battle holds. It does indeed. And that was a great time. So often I feel like when teams have the Rainmaker in that position, or in a lot of positions over the course of Splatoon, where you aren't sure how far forward you should step, you aren't sure how risky you should be, at some point there is a right time to take the points and recoup. And I think that time they picked the absolute perfect time. I'm a little surprised they got to 33 out of that, but again, that's situational awareness. All right, Nine, I, everyone is saying that you need to turn it up. I'm I have turned you, you up turn three up. separate times here. Okay. Number then four, I will, like, you are peaking on my meter here, but let's let we'll, we'll have okay. everybody keep us keep us honest, keep us honest. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll see exactly how that goes. But again, down to that 33 point mark for freeze here, which is huge. The teams didn't listen to the whole like higher seed gets off the side, so the colors are wrong. But that's fine too. Again, scuff broadcast guys, welcome to the Transatlantic Splatoon League. That's exactly what we're known for. Mika's gonna pick up one, pick up a second here for Freeze, and they're going to continue picking up Rainmaker, continue moving on forward, and continue applying pressure to Rift, who just cannot quite seem to lock down uh, a majority of this map. I mean, look at how much is purple right now. Nine. Look at that, and exact look where Noctis is. Noctis got both of them there. That's actually a delayed wipe, and the only thing right now holding them back is the Rainmaker shield. Alexei is going to try to slow them down a little bit, and Noctis, I think, bailed out, but look at this. This has potential to be a huge push if they step somebody forward, and they got Mika, who was the frontliner in that situation. It's going to be another three down, but once again, the patience. Can they get rid of Alexei? And Alexei is going to jump out. This should be even more points. Should be even more. The bumpers are going to try to come in here to stop Zeros. It's going to try to jump for Joy. It's going to get it down to 15. I think that might have been already pushed too, but nonetheless, the defense is going to hold a little bit here for Rift. They're going to have an opportunity to push it back the other direction. That said, I mean, but again, it's just an ink back here in mid. Mika's going to pick up yet another one, and the Rainmaker is going to go down here for Rift, and two versus two on the map, and it's on the side here as well. Mika picks up one, now looking for the second, and uh, Freeze is really looking to hold this out. Yes. A little bit of taunting. <laughs> Is a splat in a bag count as one and a half splats? Like, can we can we please establish exactly how many splats that's worth? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, hey, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it afterwards. But I do want to point out, you saw there in that situation that after getting one pick, uh, I believe it was Urza had already tried to go after Zeras there to knock them away and actually got taken down from there. And another crazy shot 
Alexei oh. getting a little bit of revenge, but it does seem like they're really, they're in a position where they really have to move forward, and Noct is actually getting a huge pick right there to hold them back even further. But you see right now, slowly but surely, the members of Rift are finding their footing, and as I say that, just enough time for the rest of the members to come around, paint behind them, and a delayed wipe. But you see, they were starting to get a little bit of an attack going, but just too much defense on the side. And okay, but I think we're on to game two. Yeah, it definitely looks like things are going to solve that here. I mean, again, the purple ink is all around this Rainmaker right now. A little bit challenged here. It's going to get picked up, and it's going to go immediately down. And the last ditch effort fails. Freeze is going to go up 1-0. Pick up that first neutral map, then well done to them. The interesting thing... Wait, 999, show the scoreboard. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I got it too early. Hold on, hold on, we're back, we're back. Top fragging chargers on the either side of the map. I think that's going to show you how crucial the backline battle is moving forward. All right, and now we can go back. Now we can go back. <laughs> nine's, nine's learning the ropes here, everybody. Well, the funny thing is I've done this before, but uh, it's a little different when... I don't know. You should see all the spreadsheets Kbot has working behind the scenes here, everybody. It truly is remarkable. Uh, how he's been able to engineer this this professional looking broadcast with nothing more than a ketchup packet in Google Sheets. It's I think it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, we we do our best around here. Um, again, the codes I think are still going to be wrong because the players aren't paying attention to me. Um, but oh well, you know, we try our best and it, it's still going to come out like it's whatever. <laughs> it's not like this is the most, probably one of the more important matches in the European division or anything. You know, it, it's fine, guys. It's fine, really. So talking a little bit about that match and I, I guess the way to kind of look at this over the course of the entire set is the neutral maps themselves. And for those of you who've been watching all of Tassel, this is probably nothing new to you. But we do have a really interesting way that maps are picked here as well as how neutral maps are decided. And okay, but I know you kind of originated the system. So instead of me kind of dancing around it here... I mean, what about this system was something that attracted you and everybody else who ended up designing it? I wasn't the one that designed this. This is actually Sendo. Um, yeah, Sendo. Well, so, I know, you, yeah, I know yeah. you, were, you guys had talked about it, at least for part of it. If I scroll up in the uh, chat, I can probably find it. I, I think we might have talked about it a little bit. But uh, basically, I think it is a balance overall kind of method here, right? Especially in something like a nine-game set. Um, on the whole... I mean, it kind of makes sense to go 3-3-3, three, three, and three, right? Um, where you get three maps for one team, three maps for the other team, and three maps that are kind of in the, in the middle, right? Um, the other interesting thing is about how these play into team map pools. Uh, so it's worth noting that uh, I believe each team has a pool of six that they're allowed to choose from that they have to declare a week in advance of their match. Um, so that also provides a more limited pool that these teams can start practicing on in their scrims and things like that to try to prepare themselves for what their opponents might pick. So uh, it's not like they're just picking one out of 120 some odd maps out of thin air, right? They're picking these maps that they've already kind of declared. Um, so that's one of the things that allows for like a little bit more focused practice as teams start to head into these matches in, in this competitive environment. So it's a little bit interesting uh, to kind of think about that on the whole. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think it's very balanced on a whole, right? Uh, the only thing could be is that you could say in the first, like, five games that the top seed gets two maps and the lower seed gets one map. Um, but if the set continues going the distance, if it's going to be a little bit more of a contested set, um, things will probably come on the backside for the lower seeded team, uh, you know, as this kind of progresses. Mm -hmm. And you brought up a great point about the the focused practice because i think even from the very beginning of splatoon like with all these maps and modes that's always been the big thing is how do we get a map list set so that players don't have to practice 120 maps but then also give them the opportunity to have a little bit of control over what maps they play and i think that there have been so many different opportunities that you know, different tournaments have taken, the different teams have taken, and even in scrims, they've tried to figure out a way to make this work. And I think at least for exhibition matches, I think that this format is a really, really good one, uh, especially the one week in advance portion. I have no idea how many times that's actually been, you know, followed, uh, or if it's just a loose suggestion, but I think it's really, really good. And uh, I like that even now, TOs continue to find new and creative ways to let players show off their skills. Uh, we now have everybody back in the lobby, everybody. We uh, took yeah. a little moment there. Apologies on that. 
uh, someone had hopped out. But I think that we have changed the teams as well. Uh, yes. Not the team colors. So we should be back on that as well. We should be back on the colors. Uh, also, I think Zekin was just resetting uh, his internet real quick. Uh, apparently, he saw everyone is laggy on his own screen. So went back, reset the router, and is now back in the lobby. So we'll be hopping into the next one momentarily. Splatzones on Wahoo World is going to the pick that comes in from Freeze. And uh, this is kind of an interesting pick here in nine. Uh, I mean, is there really a favorite here? I'm trying to think, like... Yeah, it, well, the, the teams, from a compositional standpoint, I'd say no, simply because the teams end up doing a lot of the same things. The real question that I want to see here now... Okay, that was my question, is is Urza going to stay K-Pro? And it looks like it, so... I, the thing, when Urza breaks this weapon out on splat zones, it always tells me that they're really just trying to create as much room as they can so that Urza can go up and pick on some of these other shorter range weapons, but I think that's always very risky, especially with the way that the last game went. It didn't seem like there was a lot of room to maneuver. It really didn't, and I mean, this, but I think a large part of that is a testament to how Freeze likes to play the game. In a lot of cases, it's not just the one that's getting in your face, oftentimes with a handsome machine. Uh, and even Mika isn't afraid to get involved there, getting one onto Skose as well. Uh, so, you know, that's something to look out for here, is that Freeze is not afraid to step forward and find these picks when uh, they're given the opportunity to do so. And now, look at how far forward they're already pushed, already applying loads of paint into this courtyard right now for them, and it's making it even more difficult for Rift to get back into the zone. Yeah, and look at how quickly that armor got shattered as well. When your armor goes away before you even get to the zone that makes it that much more difficult to take it thankfully they did have another special here two specials now basically three specials being what it took to get to that zone and take it back so we always say that that never really bodes well but it is all about the lockout here let's see how they position it looks like they're going to try to build up as many specials as they can that can going to go back to try to get a little armor this guy's he's got to be careful here they have to have seen him he needs to be careful not to go down he doesn't have a lot of support i know that urza's moved up but again, the separation here could bite them. Here's the engage coming in from Rift. Do they look for the Stingray? They look for the Inkjet from Skoze, but Skoze is going to go down on the front line. Now Alexei gets taken down by this, the counter ray back the other direction. It should allow Freeze to step forward with a two-down situation, paint the zone, and find the cap, and indeed they do. And now we'll see how well the, the lockout goes the other direction, if they can try to get a little bit more of a lead built up on this board. It, the scary thing about their comp, too, is it's going to be very, very difficult for them to do much damage to the zone without taking out a lot of the members of Freeze here. If you look at them right now, they do have Skoze's Ink Jet, they have armor, and they do have a Booyah Bomb, but we all know the K-Pro isn't what's going to be building the Booyah Bomb. They're going to only paint the zone when the opponent isn't there to paint over them, so very interesting the way they've tried to gear themselves up here as another one goes down trade for trade, but again, they needed to take down two or three members before they were able to get enough ink on the zone to take it. Now, to their credit, you know, Rift are some of the best people, certainly in the Western scene, at doing just that, but you can see there, if you're not able to get control, it just seems like the hold never lasts too long. And exactly the case there. Two down situation for Rift means Freeze takes control of the zone, and it means Mika here is going to be have plenty of room to paint up for another incomer to look for that next engagement. Uh, Noctis already has a splashdown here as well to try to cause a little bit of havoc there, and you already see as well Zara's on the front line. But here's the incomer coming in from Freeze again. Something that I like to see a lot of these teams do is look for the off the offensive engagement. It's another two down situation actually for both teams. The Stingray comes down because trying to dive away down to the ten tick mark though is going to be, or 11, excuse me, when they lose control. It looks like Rift might be able to step on four, but the zone's going to get painted back the other direction. Up. Training paint to the zone of these charges, and here comes the Inkjet in the, in the air, which is kind of a double-edged sword in these sorts of instances. Tanquart's going to find the pick. Alexi is the one cross map onto free, and it's going to mean Rift finds a guy. Yeah, you saw that entire time. They had a, just a really awkward situation where everyone was sort of panning, and whenever those battles occur, at some point there's always a little bit of a lull when everyone is out of ink, and that time Free just got stuck on the worst possible part, couldn't get the ink back, and you saw it gave us a little spin there as Alexi cleaned it up, and now through the penalty already, if they can survive this Stingray with nobody going down, they're going to be in a pretty good spot. Can they hold? And the Splashdown's not going to get enough of the zone either. This has been a remarkable hold. The Charger does go down. Is that going to try to paint? I think that was Urza who came behind them. So hold on a moment. What's going to happen after this Booyah Bomb? Can Zek can get enough paint and get back to the side? Has the opportunity to steal the game. Needs one more pick. 
able to find one. Just keep hitting the zone right now for freeze. One minute left to go with the game, but it's a 3 9 situation for freeze. And Rift is going to be able to find that cap. They're looking to try to move on forward here and lock this out for the next couple of seconds. It takes the timer in order to find the game. And it look it's looking ever more likely that they just are going to be able to do that. Look at how far back some of these members of freeze are. They have no specials right now. Eight takes the timer left to go. Mika trying to approach from this far side to paint the zone. Two takes the timer left to go. One, but they're not able to find it. Freeze goes two down and Rift evens the set score. That is incredible. Like, again, it, we, we said so often that it does come down to the lockout situation. And if they could survive that Stingray without losing too much space on the map, they would have a good hold. As we see second with nine armors. Fantastic job there on the junior. And we saw the big play at the end. But that really is the the piece of, Rift, or of Rift's comp there that I think is, you know, the, the goal of it, right? If you can survive and throw away the initial special pushes that come back in and turn it to a series of fights, you feel confident that you are geared up to win those fights. And, I mean, that's how it goes. That's splat zones. You win two or three of those engagements, yep. you win the game no matter how the rest of it went. And again, a lot of people are saying it in chat. Zekin, absolutely popping off there. Going for all the right plays on the junior. Also showing uh, good awareness on the whole with that weapon too. Uh, able to lock things down with splat bombs, able to paint the zone very well. Uh, honestly, <laughs> Zekin coming in clutch there for Rift has played the junior, I think for the majority, if not all of the league. Uh, but we'll see if Rift now can carry that momentum into the next game as they go onto their own pick, Tower Control Piranha Pick. Oh, oh, K-Bot, my favorite weapon, and there's two of them. <laughs> The Rapid Deco is out, and my oh my, I love this weapon. Such a fun weapon to play here, and I agree that this is a map where it can really get a lot done here. We all know what Rapid is able to do on tower control, but this is a map where you really get to play around its range because it's got very good angles, and of course, Inkjet as well. But uh, here's another weapon that does pretty well on tower control, I'd say. Just a little bit. The Stingray any weapon, as I like to call it, does very well. And there you see Zara's already starting to apply pressure back the other direction, probably trying to uh, get some of these Rift members off of that plat, especially Erza. Anytime that you see the Rapid Blaster on this side, it's going to be nearly impossible for the tower to move any further. And now Noctis is applying even more <gasps> pressure with the Inkjet coming out. Star Wars once more is able to find the last Gozik there. And it's going to open the window of freeze to continue moving on forward. They're already at the second checkpoint. They've cleared around this elbow, and they're They've got their eyes to the knockout here almost already. I was going to say, uh, don't blink, you might miss it here. This is going to be another Stingray coming at the perfect time. If Free is able to pick somebody off on that side and is, that's another two down. And uh, all right, well, you know, Alexa, can you 1v4? Uh, no, it looks like that was a little much to ask for. All right, game four. Let's go. Well then, um, do we... Is there even anything to comment on there, Nine? Uh, um, that it was... I don't know. Maybe that it was... <laughs> maybe that that was Rift's counterpick? Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah. In the business, we say that does not bode well. That is the technical <laughs> term for it. I mean, look, so that was as Piranha Pit Tower Control as any Piranha Pit Tower Control map you're you're going to see. You laid it out there in the middle of all that carnage. Uh, the Rapid Blaster has to be in the right spot. Or rather, if it's in the right spot and left to its own devices, you're not going to get past that elbow. But when both sides have that Rapid Blaster and when both of those sides also have ink jets, that the whole equation kind of gets jumbled up a little bit. And one pit goes one way, one pit goes the other way. And I, we all know when you get past that second checkpoint, it's getting down to the teens. It's just a matter of if you can hold it and what the score is. So and now we move on to another tower control map, Manta Maria. So the problem here, the nine, is that was a Rift pick. And Rift has picked all three of their maps to be tower control. So, and like even last, <laughs> even last set in the set versus Radiance, you probably would have said that Tower Control brought a pit looked like one of Rift's stronger maps in that set. Um, just due to the nature of the way that they were playing, the way they were able to pick apart Radiance on that map in particular. Maybe Freeze was prepared for it. Maybe it's something that they were really trying to look for in scrims or something like that. But now as we look towards the rest of the set, I mean, it's largely Tower Control here. And it's going to be interesting to see exactly what comes of it going down to another Tower Control map in Manta Maria. And uh, this one was a notorious map in week one. 
that ended in two KOs in the European division. Or 200 to zero KOs, I should say. We'll see if that trend continues here between these two teams. Getting it started here. Never too much variance in the comps from game to game from these teams. They're very confident in what they run and confident that it'll work for them. We do see Urza back on the T-Tech here, so maybe opting to go with something a little bit more in your face than the Rapid Deco was last time, but get ready to hear this noise a lot as the game gets started. I am really curious here. It, it does seem like the way that Rift is pairing up is just kind of getting them bunched up and really, really bullied by this K-Machine. So I'm wondering if this is just a situation where regardless of the map, regardless of the mode, there's something fundamental about the way they're approaching these engagements that Freeze just has the upper hand. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the other things here is that in the one set that was played so far by Freeze, Noctis had one of the higher KDAs in the lead for aggressive players, somewhere around the two mark. Um, so we know that Noctis is a beast. Play the Kens Machine for a large part of that set and is playing it again here as well. Uh, we expect that to be exactly the case, of course. I try to compliment him and he goes down to Skoze, who's looking to take this back the other direction for find something here. Very unfortunate there. We're able to separate a couple people out and now Skoze should have a safe landing it looks like. Yeah, was able to get away very nicely timed armor as well. And this isn't a bad uh, Stingray here either to try to push some people away but again it doesn't find anybody. Cirrus <laughs> gets the punishment for him. Highlight shot. This is auto cam everybody and yet it always seems to find the times for these nice picks. Now gonna back up and is the only one left here. And now needs to really get out of there. This is going to be almost certainly the lead. They're going to run up there pretty heavy-handedly, actually, to try to slow this down. Need to be careful not to be overzealous on the defensive side. And they have Sting. managed to make it past. Stingray duel doesn't seem to be one really for either team, but it is going to be the second checkpoint cleared by Rift as they continue moving on forward. You'll notice that Alexa is trying to, or sorry, Zara is trying to come up from behind this tower, not just able to find one. That was a splashdown. Going to create a little bit more of an area of entry with that splashdown. Inkin is going to find another one on the tower paired with the teammate to stop that down at the, that last checkpoint. Looks like that's going to be the end of the push here for Rift, but well done to them to get it back down to this point. We've got a competitive match here in this tower control. Yeah, that was really good. Ursa goes ahead and gets another one there. Does get taken down there, but that's not a bad uh, trade if you're just trying to keep it from or keep the opponent from moving back in. And it's actually, they still managed to sneak another person there. And I think this really has been the theme. It's been very clever and scrappy fights on the side. Fantastic shot by Skoze to clean that one up, and Mika gets the punish as well. But you see that they haven't been able to gear up for a big push. Mika's moving around here, trying to put a little paint up. They're trying to move up into a position where an attack can be made, but all these, these these scrappy fights here, we always talk about checking off boxes when it comes to these big pushes, and every time one of these scraps doesn't go your way, it becomes that much more difficult to get anything sustained. And you see that there, it's only a two-down situation uh, that Freeze would have to overcome, but it's going to mean the end of the push, given the positioning of the other members of Rift, which we couldn't quite see there. And now a three-down situation really means that Rift is going to have another opportunity to start pushing this tower, to start building up momentum, try to look to clear past that checkpoint and give themselves a little bit of extra breathing room as we get later and later into this game. Just over a minute 40 left. Urza has this ink jet. I'm curious when he's going to use it. If he's going to let the tower get closer, he's not. He's going straight for it here into an engagement. Good hold there by Mika to not let that one get out of hand. I thought maybe he might wait a little bit longer for uh, the tower to get a little bit closer. It, it seems like whenever the tower is there, it's that much more difficult to find the engagement that you want. But can they get back on the defensive side? It looks like they're going to get back fairly safely and maybe not retreating far enough and now jumps all the way back. So this is the one thing here. It's just damage mitigation for the members of Rift. And here's the, the other thing about Freeze's playstyle is that you might say that Mika is the support player, but in this case, oftentimes is the one being very aggressive, not being afraid to just step forward, have that armor, as well as making sure there's plenty of paint on the map. One of the uh, statistically better supports right now, but a two-down situation either side can mean that Freeze likely clears this second checkpoint. We see Skoze trying to trying to put, apply a little bit of pressure to this checkpoint and Ooh. this tower. We see the drop here comes in from three, looking for something on the back side. It's not gonna be able to find, okay, he's gonna be able to find Ooh. the side, which is actually huge here. It's gonna be a two down situation for Rift. We get a three down situation for Rift. That means the lead is very likely changing hands here. We'll see how far they can take this, because at this stage in the game, we know that this is gonna be very snowballing. 
It can right there and free I oh my god free staying alive that entire time being able to retreat there and come back It's almost like they just it's not that they forgot free was there It's that the tower was right there free broke open that game for them on the t-tech and freeze with a dominant push It just took one two down situation You saw that on the left side two people went down both of the stingrays cancel each other out and free managed to find an angle into the battle to open that one back up there. I know Free is at the bottom of the KA chart there, but believe me, those last few were what won them that game. Every single member of Free is getting involved in that last game and getting involved in the set, really. Um, and that's, I think, a large part of what's starting to win the game. I mean, we've seen individual players pop off in specific moments for Rift, but very rarely does it seem that they're lining all of those up, those pop-offs up at the right time in order to grant them the game victory. Um, and Free is just snowballing there right to the end uh, on top of, as you mentioned, Free staying alive. Uh, starting to look very good for them as we move on forward here. Starting to look good for them. And uh, also, Kbot, which team did you predict would win this? Not that I'm keeping score of how many points behind right. I am or anything. All right, you know. all right. Look, look. I it's a simple question. Thought... It's a simple question. I picked Rift. Mm. I thought we'd give them a little bit of credit given their victory over Radiance. I see now that that could be a mistake. Yeah, and it, right. to be fair, it's earlier. I've I've uh, stuck my foot in my mouth before in situations like these, so <laughs> it it's is, still early. It's early. But uh, you remember what happened last time? Radiance was true. winning true. four to two, and Rift was able to come back in that one. So, <laughs> bite your tongue, nine. Bite your tongue. It is way too early to be boasting about predictions. It is. I just I just thought that I'd uh, add a little extra stakes to this. You know. I think the stakes were already high enough. Of course, you would know about those stakes if you're following the Transatlantic Splatoon League Twitter account, shameless pug, plug, at tassel underscore SPL. But enough of that. Time to get back to this match. It is the freeze pick as we go to Sturgeon Shipyard Splatsons. <laughs> All right, here it is, everybody. People have already called for it. Noctis is going to be breaking out the clash here. A very, very fun weapon. And we've seen Freeze absolutely dominate on this map with this exact composition. On the other side, though, look at this. Urza has switched over to an end zap as well. So often when we see the double end zap, it is because you feel like fights aren't going your way. And this is a rough start already. Just one member left. And look at how far they've moved up. A wipe in the first 20 seconds came on. Really showing uh, true mechanical prowess here is... Uh, the entirety of free. Look at free. Already moving forward. Now opting to back up a little bit, saving the spot. Just throwing the first bombs from afar. Hitzel would be proud. Uh, and now has the bomb rush at the ready. There's the Inkgummer as well, trying to fend off and stave off this push coming in from Rift. And it looks like they're going to be successful in doing so with one going down on Rift and all of their resources already used. Freeze is able to hold on here, and they're very likely gonna go for the knockout as well they might you can see right there that's another one down and they have one armor that's the only special they're gonna have really in the rest of this game they have to make it count you see urza already take it down and noctis just absolutely loves all these things that he's fighting they pose no threat to a clash blaster who knows where you are and how's about that i thought we saw the earliest and quickest knockout in the league earlier how's about this what a fantastic game by freeze uh yeah so, I, I I think that that is that is a composition from Freeze that very few other teams run, and even if they did run it, it would probably not be able to be executed nearly as well as Freeze is able to. I mean, look at just again, you, how can you expect Noctis? Like, where can you expect Noctis to be with a Clash Blaster? Right, that that is something that Noctis has expressed that he is very comfortable on running on specifically like all modes Sturgeon Shipyard. Is there literally anyone else in the game at the high level that is running Clash Blaster on all modes at Sturgeon Shipyard? Because I don't think there's a single player that is playing Clash Blaster effectively. But look at what, look the amount of work that Noctis was able to put in, the amount of pressure there, as well paired with the rest of the team that was just able to completely run around and dominate the opposing courtyard. Yeah, that, it was absolutely disgusting from the get-go. But, you know, to that point, though, I think it is kind of interesting. You brought up something there. No, we don't see many people using Clash Blaster on that map, but there is an argument to be made for heavy map specializations. If you have a map where you have a weapon that works no matter what, 
you may as well go for it. I mean, we, I think maybe most famously, Nerishio using Carbon on uh, Mako Mart. I think we've all seen some of those VODs and how disgusting that got. But I think it just goes to show you that even if it's not, you know, conventional, I mean, Noctis is a player who I feel like can make most weapons work, but it, it always comes back to different situations in the game and what you feel best maximizes your skill set and what your team is able to do. And that's what it can look like at the highest level. It's beautiful. And uh, it another tower control, Kbot. <laughs> Skipper Pavilion this time. Uh, this is a worrying trend for Rift. Of course, their pick, so maybe they've got something in the bag for us here, but uh, at the same time, Freeze has just always been able to find an answer in most of these cases. There was only that one push on Splatoon's Wahoo World that sent Rift in favor of that game. Um, again, by the way, folks, uh, this is probably worth mentioning because I haven't mentioned it yet. If Rift were to win this game, they would lock first seed in the European division. However, it doesn't, it, at the moment, doesn't look like that would be the case, and things are going to get blown wide open here, assuming the Freeze can pull this off. Take a look at it now. I'll show you the comps here once again. Urza is going back to the blaster as well as Noctis here. So it again seems like a total replay of some of our earlier games with how these teams are gearing up there. And once again, Zekin takes an angle into the fight there, but Free is just a little bit too quick once again. Gets the pick, but also the survivability. And k I'm telling you, it just seems as though in these engagements, at some point it's not a strategy thing. The execution is off the charts right now for Freeze, and Freeze is going to have an armored inkjet here to make them pay even more. Oh no, Freeze. Let them live for a little while longer, but apparently not. It's a two-down situation. The Stinger's on the tower, and it's the three-down situation for Rip. That means that the knockout is growing ever imminent now. As Freeze continues moving on forward again, down to that third checkpoint already in this match. And it very likely means that Freeze closes out here, unless the hold's going to come on in. But one gets taken down on tower. The dive is going to come on through. That's a two-down situation for Freeze. Flat Bomb is thrown here. As one of those members tries to run away. Looks like, though, Rift is going to be able to hold at the single-digit mark. All right, well, you know... <laughs> How's about that for his start right there? You know, you talk so much in, in Splat Zones about how that very first wipe completely changes the dynamic of the game because of how specials get stacked after that, but it's just like that too. Somebody commented on how it was a, a solo armor there. Well, I mean, they didn't have anyone else to use it on and it was the only special they had. So this very, very frustrating for, it seems like seemingly every game, the opening just goes one way. Now, there is going to be an opportunity for a push here. It's two down. Zeris is going to be at the ray, but if they can get around this ray before too much damage is done and too many checkpoints are gone, this might be an opportunity for a nice counter push. So this checkpoint is going to be cleared. You'll notice that none of the members of Rift are really stepping forward, really trying to find this engagement quite yet. It's and now with the inkjet. There it goes the double inkjet that we know Rift for, but it's going to leave the tower completely vulnerable now. Is that engagement going to go in Freeze's favor? The tower is going to reset here, and there's nothing much that Alexa can do in the current positioning here. It was just trying to charge up, right? Just trying to support the rest of the team. The rest of the front line, though, has gone down for Rift, and with the freedom situation, the tower is going to reset back. In. And I love the way that they went about attacking that tower. They knew that the special was coming in, and they had the special set aside to deal with. It, and then they understood that they still had enough resources to go and try to attack the tower to move Alexei back. Alexei being there meant that there was no way for anybody to get back to the tower. A very unsafe landing from the ink jets as a result. But again, it all starts with that situational awareness and understanding what resources the opponent is putting where and what you have to meet those threats. Um, the tower is going to apply a little pressure, but it's going to go into an opportunity for Zeros to jump back here and find the counter ray into Alexei's ray on defense. Now looking for one more here, but again, single digits here. No checkpoints left to go. It's a two-down situation for Rift, and it looks like Freeze might be able to take this. The splat bomb gets thrown, but it's not going to be enough, and Freeze is going to take the set five to one. Woo! <laughs> All right, well, there we go. Um... 5-1, everybody. This was uh, a set that I think a lot of people were looking forward to as they got into it. You can see right there, both Mika and Free at the top. Free made so many insane plays over the course of that set. Like, I... It, sometimes... Sometimes when you look at a player and you see all these incredible plays come through, you think, oh, every shot must be a highlight shot. These engagements that they're taking, these are insane, but... The survivability sometimes, I think, is a part that people don't necessarily look at. 
being able to hide just a little bit behind a bit of cover to keep yourself relevant in the engagement. Anyone can swim all the way away and retreat, but I think it takes a really skilled frontliner to understand how many shots you've taken, how much damage you've taken, and how close you can stay into the fight. If you retreat all the way back, you've given up all that space, but if you can stay at least a little relevant, remain somewhat threatening, and then another member of your team comes forward, you can crash back in. And there were so many times we saw Free do exactly that over the course of it. We saw some insane shots being hit, and if you're in chat right now, you know exactly what everyone is saying when those shots are getting hit. But, I mean, with, th this just seemed like like an expo on how Freeze wants to play their game, right? It showed their skill set over the course of all of these different uh, tower control games, especially. I mean, the only one they lost was Splat Zones. Yeah. <laughs> and they almost won that one, too. Right. That one was very close. I mean... The largest thing for me heading into the set was I was I was especially looking at uh, Free's performance, and Free was just not very active in the set versus usual guys. Um, and so a lot of things would be, you might like look at that, and you might be like, well, you know, is he going to show up in a match like this? And every single player on Free showed up today versus Rip. Um, and again, I, I honestly thought that the team that performed better today would be the one that eventually took the set. I thought that Rift might be able to be the ones that perform better, especially coming off of that high of Radiance, but evidently not. Freeze is going to take it 5-1, to one, as you mentioned. I mean, it's... And, you know, again, a lot of people in chat right now, Freeze might be the best in Europe. I mean, if you look at how close Rift and Radiance was, uh, the, the Freeze Radiance set, I think, is going to be uh, also even more telling. Of course, that'll be one of the other things to solidify that playoff picture. But right now, I mean... Speaking of that play picture, I'm going to pull up my little sheet here. Go for do it. do a slight bit of manipulation. Um, but really, I mean, things have been completely blown open now. And so while granted, it's most likely that if uh, Freeze is able to win uh, a large portion of the next of their sets, they'll probably be the ones that'll end up the first in the European division. But at the same time, any one of the top three teams right now can take that first spot in, out of this division. So uh, things all of a sudden got uh, really wild and will get even wilder if uh, for the last match of the league, if Radiance beats Freeze. But of course, only time will tell on that one. Right. And it is dangerous to kind of get into that rock, paper, scissors mentality of, well, OK, if if if. If Rift beat Radiance, and then Freeze did this to Rift, then Freeze will be like, it doesn't always work like that. These are not equations. These are humans. They play the game. So I, I am really excited to see that. I agree entirely with what you're saying. And I think that, you know, any answers that we think we found today could be totally dashed in the next set. But I, I think this, again, just kind of goes to show how quickly this game can turn on its head and how quickly these maps can be decided how one crazy play by one player can open things up outside of you know consistent consistent pressure that comes in from both of these teams but i i agree kbot next time that uh next time we see freeze play i think that is the opportunity for them to really show all right we're here to stay uh come at us bro come at us